Deltarune is a game of many strengths, but chief among them is its cast. Just like Undertale before it, Deltarune's introduced a plethora of instantly iconic characters, providing ample intrigue and growth in their first two chapter outings while planting the seeds for much larger character arcs down the line. The chapter by chapter storytelling that the game employs is extremely effective in developing its cast, by inserting them into standalone stories that occur over the course of a chapter while still contributing to the larger narrative at play in Deltarune. And of course, the core of these standalone stories are the Dark Worlds. Dark Worlds are the avenue to the game's thematic and narrative development, as well as that of our characters. We've seen the growth that venturing through the dark can inspire, but have also seen how it allows characters to seek morally dubious methods to keep the adventure going. Regardless, whether good or bad, Dark Worlds build character and keep our story moving. So naturally, the concept of a character going to a Dark World is very enticing to fans. An entire chapter dedicated to their favorite's development, or at the very least, allowing them to play an active role in the plot. Chapter 2's inclusion of Noelle and Birdly in extremely prominent roles has proved that Chris and Susie aren't the only lighteners who will be winding up in the game's various unlit expeditions. But, like most things in Deltarune, that leaves us with a very important question. Who? With a hometown full of characters, new and returning alike, who gets the honor of exploring a dark world and thereby becoming essential to Deltarune's narrative progression? Well, that's what we're taking a look at today. We'll be examining every NPC in hometown, the important ones, not like, milk guy, and giving them a score based on how likely I think they are to end up in Dark Worlds 3 through 7. With all that said, let's get started. Before we fully get into the list of characters, a couple important things to mention. One, while the list is mostly in alphabetical order, I might not fully adhere to that if I reach a duo of characters or some that I'd like to speak of in the context of one another. The entire Holiday family, for example, will be under H instead of spread wildly throughout the alphabet. Two, this scoring system is obviously excluding the very likely possibility of a roaring-like event that turns the entire town into a technical dark world, because then everyone would get a 100% chance of venturing through the dark and that's just boring. So, let's get things going with everyone's favorite, or at least my favorite teacher, Alphys. Now, Alphys is the first of what I call a major Undertale totem, or Mutt for short. A Mutt is a character that's already served a crucial role in Undertale as part of its main cast. Of course, we know that these are different versions of these characters with different lives, mostly, but I still think it's important to keep in mind whether or not a character has been essential in the past and whether or not that means anything in regards to them being potentially important in Deltarune. Unfortunately, I think Alphys is the least likely Mutt to end up in a Dark World. As Chris's teacher, she definitely holds Light World significance and the school hosting the castle town means that it'll never be fully obsolete, but with the game entering its weekend arc, it's very possible that Alphys' class specifically could become a less relevant location, even if the characters within it don't. And in general, it's pretty difficult for me to picture her playing a super important role in the Dark World when her Light World role seems to suffice in keeping her relevant. I'll give Alphys a 15% chance of entering a Dark World. Alvin, known as Father Alvin to Hometown, is up next, and at the very least clears Alphys in terms of likelihood. Similarly to her, I'd like to use him to introduce another important concept in this video. You see, Alvin resides in what I call an undeniably possible Dark World Gateway, or Updog for short. An Updog is a location that has a decent to high likelihood of being a Dark World somewhere down the line. So, logically, a character being tied to such a location could majorly improve their chances. Now, if you've seen my Dark World prediction video, or like, any other theory since Chapter 2's release, you would know that the church seems like a prime target for a new fountain's appearance. The game hinting at Chapter 4 taking place the day of a service definitely adds a lot of credibility to the idea that the church could be an upcoming setting. Father Alvin being the head of the church helps, but that's not necessarily enough. A character being tied to an updog doesn't confirm their participation in a Dark World adventure, we've also got to figure out if they've got enough potential to carry the chapter or chapters that they would appear in. So does Alvin? Eh, I think he's got some material to work with. He's tied directly to Hometown's religion, which presents the opportunity to explore concepts like the Angel through him. He's also connected to Gerson, a mildly important Undertale character, and Chris, our protagonist. And while all Dark World venturers have been Chris's age so far, if Chapter 2's ending is anything to go by, the concept of authority figures being brought along for the ride isn't all that unlikely. I'd give Alvin a solid 40% chance, only because I feel like there are other potential Lightner candidates in the chapter he'd presumably lead. I'm realizing that we've got a lot of important A characters here because here comes Asgore. And considering Asriel is directly after him, let's get the family back together and bring Toriel up here as well. In fact, let's raid her first because, look at this, that's a 99%, how do you avoid that? Asgore is definitely the more interesting possibility to analyze. He's both a mutt and lives in an updog, being one of the most important characters in Undertale and housing an extremely prevalent double door in Deltarune. He's also Chris's father, giving him obvious narrative importance, and Chapter 3 sets the precedent for members of the Dreamer family ending up in Dark Worlds. 
So why do I feel so hesitant? Everything here should add up to Asgore being one of the most obvious potential Dark World perusers, and yet I find myself not wanting to score him very high. I think it has to do with how Toby talks about Deltarune. How he's so happy whenever people view it as its own thing, and how it'll obviously have connections to Undertale, but largely has an identity outside of that. Wouldn't said identity feel less original if we slowly but surely pick up all of Undertale's main cast and bring them along for the ride as the game progresses? Now, obviously, my interpretation of tweets doesn't invalidate the fact that Asgore has far more going for him than most characters on this list. He's a major part of Chris's life and could easily be relevant in a Dark World adventure, especially considering his ties to hometown. I'll rate him highly, but cautiously. 70%. Now with Asriel, things get really interesting. Mainly because he's not here. We know from Toriel's introductory dialogue that he'll be coming next week, which, if we check our probable chapter calendar, could range from chapter 5 to chapter 7. Most people, myself included, assume he'll be arriving very late into the game. While Asriel technically played a vital role in Undertale through Flowey, Asriel himself is ripe with potential to explore, which begs the question, will he jump into a dark world? I've got no idea. Seriously, this is probably the second toughest character on this list to figure out. We're talking about events that could be five chapters away at this point, trying to figure out whether or not they'd allow the yet-to-be-seen college dreamer to enter the darkness. What I can say is that Asriel, without a doubt, will be important. He's Chris's brother, one that they horribly miss and likely feel inferior to. He's obviously going to tie into the game's themes of escapism. And he's connected to Des, which is a whole other can of worms that we'll get into later. Overall, I say that Asriel's most likely to be relevant around the time when the Roaring arrives, which, as we established, doesn't count as a dark world. But, considering the fact that he could just as easily be part of an earlier chapter, alongside the fact that I'm not sure about anything, earns him a 50%. We'll just have to wait and see. Birdly is our first double dip character, someone that's already been to a dark world with our analysis focusing on whether or not they could do so again. So, could he? Absolutely not. Not only was the cyber world perfectly attuned to his character, but one of the game's routes leaves him very... incapable. I don't doubt that the normal route and the Snowgrave route will strongly differ from one another, but differing to the point of taking out a character important enough to explore multiple dark worlds sounds like a developmental nightmare. Birdly's role going forward will likely be to participate in light world shenanigans and have some funny dialogue. I don't think he has any more fantastical adventures in his future. 5%. And just to rattle off a few other low percenters, Braddy 1%, Caddy 1%, Cat Family 1%, but Caddy with an I, now we're getting somewhere. Being one of Chris's classmates, she's definitely more relevant than your average hometown resident, especially since she's one of few to earn herself a dialogue box portrait. The same is true for Jockington, who we'll also be rating now because, come on, the two are basically inseparable. Unlike Temmie, Monster Teen, and Snowy, these two are characters original to Deltarune, just like Noelle and Bertley. But that isn't where their potential for relevance ends. In 2020, to celebrate two years of Deltarune, Fangamer released some line stickers. And the only Light World characters original to Deltarune to be represented were Noel, Birdly, Caddy, and Jockington. To me, this pretty much confirms that these two are going to be important in some way. If not, why create merchandise of them specifically? Keep in mind, this was a year before Chapter 2 came out, and Noelle and Birdly had yet to receive any plot relevance, and yet, here they were, a tease of what's to come. I can only assume that something similar is being done with Caddy and Jockington, and I imagine we'll find out if that's the case sooner rather than later. Both get an 85%. Next up is a very mysterious group of characters, the Gaster Follower Lookalikes. Three NPCs who share a striking resemblance with Undertale's greyed-out royal scientist lovers who gave us most of the info we know about Gaster today. Now from that alone, it's easy to assume they're going to be relevant, but eh, no portraits, no otherwise interesting dialogue. Going to a dark world kind of implies narrative importance, and while Gaster himself obviously has a major role to play in this game, as well as the concept of goners, I don't think that confirms the follower lookalikes are jumping through double doors anytime soon. Gaster related doesn't necessarily mean dark world related just because of entry number 17. A plethora of sci-fi shenanigans could happen to these guys to explain how they are in Undertale. However, we do have this line of dialogue from Chapter 2 where Chris tells Undyne that hometown residents are at risk of falling into a dark world. There's definitely something to that. The best chance these guys have of entering a non-roaring dark world is to be part of a larger Lightner's disappearing plotline, which doesn't seem too unlikely. I don't expect to see this guy playable anytime soon, but I'll give the follower lookalikes a 15% chance. Okay, now we've arrived at the big one, the Holiday Family. Noelle, Des, Rudy, and Mayor Holiday. Presumably C, but, you know, unconfirmed. I subscribe to the Carol Holiday theory, but we'll keep things formal for the sake of canon. 
Personally, I think the further we get into this family, the crazier things get. Starting us off, of course, we've got Noelle, who partook in the most recent Dark World adventure. Is she gonna double dip? Absolutely. Toby considers her a main character on the same level as the Fun Gang, or maybe even sees her as part of the Fun Gang. There's no way she's being excluded from the rest of the game's narrative progression. Like, 99% chance, her motifs pop up in yet-to-be-used music, she's one of the most prevalent characters in concept art, and oh yeah, she's tied to one of the biggest mysteries in the game, Des's disappearance. Yep, that's her. That's what she looks like. Let's shift gears over to Noelle's missing sister. Will she end up in a dark world? Yes, 95%, she's already there. At this point, it feels abundantly clear that Des isn't dead. Spamton sweepstakes could have been subtitled the Des Info Session if they really wanted to. We had additional information on her and Noelle's relationship, multiple pages referencing the fact that she disappeared, and a literal mission statement given to us through deltrune.com slash Des, which plays the music findher.mp3. And unless we're supposed to find a pile of dust somewhere, or whatever monsters turn into in this world, it's highly unlikely that Des is no longer with us. Her being trapped in a dark world somewhere makes perfect sense. Absent, but still findable, at least for our ragtag team. Sorry, Asgore, I'm sure you tried your best. But speaking of Asgore, let's move on to one of the few people in this town who still seems to respect him. Rudy. 65% chance, this family's killing it! Right now, we're seeing a lot of similarities to the Dreamers. Chris is our protagonist, so Toriel, Asgore, and Asriel's chances are naturally heightened. Noelle is also extremely important, so her family's likelihood goes up as well. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, this guy's knocking on death's door. He is in no state for a fantastical escapade. And I would agree, which is the whole point. Dark worlds are escapist fantasies, allowing our cast to engross themselves in epic adventures and battles without having to worry about the turmoil of the real world. So, what better way to communicate Noelle's escapism than to have everything go back to normal? Her sister isn't missing, she's here. Her dad isn't sick, he's strong. All things that could feasibly occur in dark worlds, but would be very difficult to accomplish in reality. But even outside of my interpretation of the game's themes, Rudy is tied to two updogs. The hospital, where he currently resides, and the church, where he claims to be going. I can easily see Rudy tagging along for a chapter, sharing some important moments with his daughter, only for us to snap back to reality where he's worse than he's ever been. As tragic as it is possible. But now we arrive at the most difficult portion of this list. Mayor Holiday. Remember the Asriel problem, how discussing him reminded me of the fact that we're only two-sevenths into this game? Mrs. Holiday is that times ten. At least Asriel played a role elsewhere to give us some context. At least we know Asriel's name. I can count the amount of confirmed Mayor Holiday facts on one hand, and two of them are the same fact. But to make the most out of what we've got, uh, she's connected to Noelle and her issues, that's something. Town Hall doesn't seem like an updog, but being firmly connected to any building can't be bad for her chances. And she could also be the knight, but that's a sidetrack we are not going down, lest we never return. Do I have to give her a rating? Will you guys be upset if I don't? You will? Fine. Uh... 52%. Sure, why not? That's non-committal enough. Finally, an easy one. Monster Kid, and throw the rest of Chris's classmates in for good measure, they're all getting equally low scores. Not original, no intrigue, no hinted importance, you're all getting a 5. Next up is Napstablook, and hear me out, hear me out, 50%. And I'm dragging Undyne all the way up from you to help me explain why. Now, Chapter 2's ending saw a series of events transpire that led a lot of people to think Undyne will play a major role in Chapter 3. Chris rips out the soul, slashes Toriel's tires, Toriel calls the cops, Chris creates a fountain, and leaves the door wide open, anticipating their arrival. Easy, right? Undyne should be as inevitable as Toriel. Except, she's not the only police officer. Napsabluke works there as well. Deltrune is no stranger to bait and switches. General audiences spent three years thinking Chris was about to go on a crazy murder rampage at the end of chapter one, only for them to instead stuff their face with pie. Letting people spend years theorizing about Undyne's role in Deltrune's next adventure only for Naps to Blue to pull up instead seems extremely possible to me, to the point where I see both characters' involvement as equally feasible. So, both Blueki and Undyne get a 50%. In Chapter 2, Onion-san tells us that they can hear a song under the lake at night, and some people have taken this to mean that a future chapter could potentially feature some sort of submerged dark world. Certainly possible, but even if that's the case, I really don't see Onion coming along with us. 5%. Pizza Pants has some stuff going for him, like a smidge of Dark World potential. He knows Chris, was friends with Asriel, and is tied firmly to Icy's Pezza, which doesn't seem like the most likely location for a fountain to me, but just like the mayor's office, being connected to any location can't be bad for your chances. 
Outside of that, though, he really doesn't bring a lot to the table. Trust me, I'd love to see Burger Pants suit up for a mission to save the world, but I can't say it seems all that likely to me. That said, he's got a little more sauce than the average hometown resident, pun intended, so we'll slide him a 10%. And now, to finish this off, the ones you've all been waiting for, Sans and Papyrus. These two are so weird. Like, if anything, my hesitance to Undertale characters playing major roles should apply tenfold here. Chris hadn't even met Sans prior to Chapter 1 and still hasn't met Papyrus. Unlike Toriel and Asgore, there's no direct connection to our protagonist. And unlike someone like Undyne, there's no clear narrative setup for them to enter a dark world. And yet, I feel like they kinda have to? I mean, there's so much we don't know about these two, but it feels like the more concrete information we receive, the more questions are raised. Everything, including Papyrus' recent newsletter Q&A, points to the skeletons somehow arriving in Undertale from Deltarune. But if that's the case, how did they do it? How did Sans get his hands on such a machine? Why can't he go home? Why does he know what the sun is, but Papyrus doesn't? Both he and presumably Papyrus have Gaster Blasters, and Gaster has an overarching presence in Deltarune. What's that story? So many mysteries that have been set up to be solved, and can only be solved by Sans and Papyrus playing an active role in this story, and it'd be difficult for them to do so without ever stepping foot into the dark. Maybe I'm misinterpreting Toby's words, and what he really means is that he's happy people are viewing Deltrin as its own thing now, so that when Undertale characters do become heavily involved, people can still see it as something original? I don't know, man, we're two chapters in. All I know is that as weird as it is for me to imagine Sans wandering around a dark world, or heck, becoming a party member, I can't picture Deltarune's story progressing without these two playing very important roles. I'll give Sans and Papyrus a 75% chance. And there you have it, all of Hometown's characters rated for Dark World Venturing potential. All the ones I view as important anyways, I'm sure there's at least one that I've forgotten, but overall, I think I covered most bases. Deltrune's next release may still be a ways away, but that doesn't have to stop us from trying to get ahead of the game. As always, I'd love to hear what you think. Which characters do you think we'll see in our upcoming Dark World adventures? Which ones do you think could become party members? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you all later.